Vision. Deception. Dynamite. He is a nine-time NHL All-Star, a Conn Smythe Trophy recipient, and a three-time Stanley Cup champion. He's the first and only American-born player to ever win the Art Ross and Hart trophies. A player who could dangle his way out of a speeding ticket, who knew where his teammates would be before they even knew themselves. Standing at 5 foot 10, 177 pounds, it's showtime. Number 88, Patrick Kane. Patrick Timothy Kane II was born on November 19, 1988 in Buffalo, New York. Dad taught him how to play from the moment he could walk as he fell in love with the game of hockey. At the age of 9, young Patrick Kane played in a summer league against older kids, and upon scoring goal after goal, parents of the other teams complained he wasn't old enough to play. But despite the ill treatment of such petty parents, he had proven to himself he could compete with stronger opponents. At the age of 14, Kane played junior hockey for the USA Bobcats as he won Most Valuable Player honors. He was starting to be noticed as he was recruited by the Honey Baked Triple A midget team and went on to play in the US National Development Program where he would lead the team in scoring. At the age of 18, Kane dressed for the London Knights of the Ontario Hockey League on a line with Sam Gagne and Sergei Kostitsyn as he registered 145 points in only 58 games, prompting the Chicago Blackhawks to select him first overall in the 2007 NHL entry draft. The Blackhawks at the time had become irrelevant, as they were regularly outside looking in when the playoffs came around. They hadn't won a cup in almost half a century, and their home games weren't even being televised. The selection of Patrick Kane and Jonathan Taves the previous year had given the Blackhawks organization some much needed hope, as they quickly turned into one of the most exciting teams in hockey. Heading into training camp in 2007, questions surrounding Kane's size were rampant, but he would let his hockey do all the talking as he won a place in the starting lineup. Playing on right wing, he went on to score 21 goals, 51 assists for 72 points, capturing the Calder Trophy for Rookie of the Year. Patrick Kane had arrived. He's shifty. Once he's entered the zone, it was pretty much game over for the opponent. He's mesmerizing, exciting the crowd with what seemed like an unlimited supply in his bag of tricks. His hands are so soft, so quick, it's as if he's playing NHL on beginner difficulty. But perhaps most amazingly, his spatial awareness is truly next level. He could see passing lanes open up before anyone on the ice, and the fact he could actually thread that needle made him absolutely terrifying to play against. Goalies might tell you the hardest shot to save is the backhand, but what about a spinorama backhand? Patrick Kane can spin like the Tasmanian Devil, scoring goals, providing assists, and simply just doing it for fun. Kane's arrival sparked a resurgence for the Blackhawks franchise, and they would make the playoffs in just his second season, where he most notably scored a hat-trick in Game 6 of the second round to carry his team into the Western Conference Finals for the first time in 14 years. They would fall to the Detroit Red Wings, but Kane's 14 points in 16 playoff games had proven to everyone he was ready for the big show. In his first two seasons, Kane's ability to put up points was what made him into an exciting player. But while he was sensational offensively, defensively he was not. He wasn't very strong on the boards, he was lazy on the back check, and he often exited his own zone too early in search of an odd man rush. But all he needed was some more experience and by the time he reached his third season in 2009, he had improved his defensive play drastically, turning him into a bona fide superstar. Scoring 88 points that year and helping the Blackhawks to second place in the Western Conference, they would defeat the Nashville Predators, Vancouver Canucks and San Jose Sharks to reach the Stanley Cup Finals. This was really the playoffs he announced to the world how clutch he can be, but none of that paled in comparison to his biggest moment of all. Game 6 in overtime, coming down the boards and scoring that goal that won it all, clinching their first Stanley Cup since 1961. Even though Jonathan Taves would win the Conn Smythe Trophy as the playoff MVP, one could argue Kane was just as deserving with his 28 points in 22 games. The next couple of seasons were rough for Kane as he fell victim to the Stanley Cup hangover. His offensive production saw a decrease as he was asked to play center, 
where he would have to focus more on defense. The thing that makes Patrick Kane so special is his ability to enter the zone and completely dictate the play. But as the center, after fulfilling his defensive responsibilities, he was often trailing the play and was thus less effective. Only when he played on the wing again did he play to his strengths and the team returned to its former glory. In 2013, Kane would lead the Blackhawks into the playoffs and boy did he lead. In Game 5 of the Conference Finals, he was determined to end the series that night as he scored a hat-trick, including the game winner in double overtime, to send the Blackhawks to the Stanley Cup Finals. He would go on to score three goals in the Finals as they captured a second Stanley Cup, proving they weren't just a flash in the pan. Kane's 19 points in 23 games earned him the Conn Smythe Trophy, and with that, he established himself as one of hockey's elite. The following season saw the Blackhawks return to the playoffs as Stanley Cup favorites. In Game 1 of the second round, the game was tied at 2 heading into the third period. Kane blew by a couple of defensemen to backhand the game-winning goal past Brzgalov, and he celebrated by yelling Showtime! The nickname he got from this moment was pretty much a summary of his entire career. Always dazzling, always entertaining, always bringing the fans to the edge of their seat. The Blackhawks would ultimately fall in Round 3 to the LA Kings in 7 games, but the following season in 2015 would see them return to the pinnacle of hockey. Kane would prove to be clutch in the playoffs once again, as his 23 points in as many games led all players and his 2 points in Game 6 of the Finals was the difference maker in securing their third cup in 6 years. There was no denying it, this Chicago Blackhawks team had become a dynasty and Patrick Kane was its ruler. The following 2015-2016 season saw a decline in the play of the team, but there was one player who remained at the top of his game, Patrick Kane. Scoring 29 points more than the next best teammate, he would register a career-high 46 goals, 60 assists for 106 points, which won him the Art Ross Trophy as the league leader in points, the Hart Trophy as the league's most valuable player, and the Ted Lindsay Award as the most outstanding player. And the scariest thing of all, he would go on to beat that personal best within a 110 point season just 3 years later. Currently in his 15th season in the National Hockey League at the young age of 33, Kane is still playing at a phenomenal level, being one of the final players left from the dynasty years. He's currently 5th in points all time as an American player, and when it's ultimately time for him to hang his skates, it wouldn't be too far-fetched to imagine he could surpass them all. Patrick Kane will be remembered for his dynamic, explosive way of playing. He does things no other player could, and he's got the ability to bring his A-game even in the playoffs where the stakes are at its highest. Without fail, he'd produce big moment after big moment. When the game is nearing its climax, you would want him to have the puck. He's always on the front foot, always looking to make things happen, never giving his opponents time to react. He is beyond dangerous with the puck, and what a killer instinct he's got. It is said the fourth win of any playoff series is the toughest to win, but that's when Patrick Kane comes alive, delivering the final blow time and time again. Kane's deking and stick handling might just be the best the sport has ever seen. His control of the puck is truly world class, and he would put it on full display, especially during the shootouts, where he would leave even the best of goalies at his mercy. And to top it off, his celebration could impress even the most unimpressed fan. It's absolutely iconic. Kane once stated that if he wasn't a hockey player, he'd be a car salesman. How fitting, as he regularly tricked and Houdini'd his opponents on the ice, just as a pushy car salesman might off of it. There are certainly fans who don't like Patrick Kane, but he would prove his doubters wrong from his inception into the league up until this very day. He's too small, they said, and he would go on to light up the league for 15 years, and he's still going strong. He can't score at even strength, they said, and he would go on to score a hat-trick the very next game, all at even strength. He's not mature, they said. Okay, fine, he wasn't for a long time, but now that he's become a father, I'm inclined to believe he's finally changed. It certainly won't be the first time Patrick Kane has proved his doubters wrong. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. If you're currently not subscribed, subscribe! 
and if you enjoyed the video, consider supporting the channel by liking, sharing, and commenting. See you soon.